Well, okay, let's start. In my talk, I want to give an overview of the challenges, uh, methods, and status of the repair of physiological sections of Big Brain 2. The creation of a 3D reconstruction of a big brain with a resolution of 20 microns meters requires not only a considerable amount of time and personnel, but also a lot of skills and experience in many fields of modern image processing and can therefore not be done by one institute alone in a reasonable amount of time. As with Big Brain 1, the data were collected and created at Ulich, the manual repairs, which we'll be discussing more detail in this talk, as well as the calculation of initial 3D reconstructions with up to 100 micron resolution were also done in Ulich. However, based on these repaired section, Claude from the MNI is computing 3D reconstruction with a final resolution of 20 microns, which will then be made available to the community. The Big Brain 2 is from a male who died of bronchial pneumonia in 1994 at the age of 30, which is pretty young for a postmodern brain. The postmodern time was about 25 hours, and the formalin fixed brain was scanned in Ulich 2004 with a Siemens Sonata 1.5 Tesla MR scanner at a resolution of 0.5 millimeters. Preparation, sectioning, and histological processing took place in Düsseldorf at the Folk Institute, headed by Carl Sullis at that time, and resulted in total in uh, 7,676 cell body stain coronal sections at 20 micron thickness. Well, I don't want to go through every single step here, but it's important to keep in mind that the sections have to go through a large number of processing steps before they are ready for digitalization. And although all steps were carried out by the lab team with great care and expertise, artifacts for this very dedicated and sensitive sections could not be avoided. For the, digitaliz for the digitalization of the stained sections, First, a flatbed scanner with a maximum resolution of 2,400 dpi, which corresponds to 10 microns, was used on the one hand, and through and tritioscope scanners, which provide a maximum resolution of one micron on the other hand. The usage of two different scanners has just historical reasons, because when the scanning started, the tritioscope scanners were not available. So it was necessary that the sections were rescanned a couple of years later. However, the basic data press processing for the 3D reconstruction is based on the 20 micron flatbed scanner images only. Although the histological processing steps were carried out with a lot of know-how, the digitized histological sections show a large number of artifacts. One of the great difficulties and challenges is that there is a wide range of types of artifacts with varying degrees of severity, distribution, and quantity. This fact makes any fully automatic processing a great challenge but most of the artifacts must be repaired to achieve a good 3D reconstruction of the brain. In order to record the artifacts both quantitatively and qualitatively, we have divided them into three groups, staining artifacts, damage with outlaws, damage with loss, and within this group, we also distinguish between minor, medium, and serious artifacts. The result of a manual classification, which is depicted in the diagram on the right side, showed that about 42% of all sections had medium to even severe artifacts. In addition, if we take a deeper look on the distribution, we see that artifacts often extend over several consecutive sections, which is of great importance for the repairs to be made. For instance, this fact hampers any repair method which is based on consecute sections only. However, but on the other hand, not all artifacts need to be repaired. One example is shown here. Some artifacts were created by removing the brain from the skull, as seen here when you look on the photo taken before the MRI scan. They were all, and, that, and that, therefore they were already present and are therefore also in the MR data set. In the pipeline, however, this MRI data set is used as a shape reference for the 3D reconstruction. And as a result, artifacts that, are, that were already present before the MRI acquisition was done must be not repaired. In the following, we look at the repair as it was done by Claude and Lindsay for, for the Big Brain 1 data set. In the first step, all large artifacts, such as shifts shown in the example above, are corrected manually in all sections. Since an average of a maximum of 20 up to 25 sections can be repaired by one expert per day, this results in an enormous workload. And for a typical brain, it took alone for this task three to four years to do all the repairs. In the second step, plus minus the three most nearest sections are nonlinearly transformed and used to repair automatically small defects and missing tissue. There too, an average is taken to compute the variance and detect outliers. Those are then replaced by best tissue on a per block basis. However, the detection of the outliers is sometimes too noisy 
and need to be replaced by user painted masks sometimes. From the last slide, we learned that manual repairing a section proves to be a very time consuming step. To speed up the process, we now use an approach based on repairing only every fifth section at a resolution of 20 microns evenly distributed over the complete brain. This fully repaired section will serve as a reference to repair the directly adjacent sections as much as possible without further manual repair. Thus, the main difference with the MNI approach is that here only every fifth section is fully repaired, whereas in the MNI approach, each section was repaired and the remaining small artifacts were automatically repaired. However, to implement a new approach, we need, among other things, an easy to use repair tool and a quality control, which should preferably be online to allow easy and direct access to all data, especially in a corona situation where a lot of people are working at home. Well, for the manual repair, we use Section Editor, a program that includes a number of fundamental image processing. In addition to the repaired image, image however, also locking information of all processing steps are stored on disk. This allows both accurate preference tracking and allows application of the locked information to the corresponding one micron sections. As an example, in the center on the right, the filling of smaller, smaller cracks is shown, which can be seen in the center in particular, can also, some, uh, sorry, can also sometimes come encompass larger areas. The selection of moving of a larger piece as well, at, uh, as, well as the automatic filling uh, of the remaining gaps is shown here on the left side. However, Processing only takes place within a section in this program, which can lead to registration problems, especially when moving larger pieces. Because, and I hope now it works, because when you see this gap, when you compare it in the original situation, this gap was very small. After the repair, <laughs> it becomes larger. And that can be a problem when you are uh, done the registration to a previous or the next section. So in the next slides, I want to show you a concrete example of a repair. Here, a larger part of the section is missing on the upper left. For correction, the area was roughly marked and saved as ROI. Externally, the immediately neighboring section, which are here 4,005 and 4,006, which fortunately were not damaged at this position, we are nonlinear transformed to the section and with the help of the previously defined ROI mask, the, masking, the missing part was then copied into the gap. Quality control is in this complete framework and a very important component. In our experience, every section and every processing step must be visually checked and to ensure that, uh, to ensure that all processing, processing steps have led to the desired result. For this purpose, we use now an online tool that allows a simple and therefore quick manual rating for the results achieved, which is shown here on the left side. And in the latest version of this program shown on the right, the right side, also markings in the form of dot markers, as well as the marking of larger areas are now supported. We expect this to make repairs even more efficient as it will be easier and faster to mark areas to be moved manually if this is still necessary. For the repair of the intermediate section an automatic method was implemented, which builds on an already completed repaired section. In the example shown, the unrepaired as well as the manual repaired section 4006 and 4011 were transformed nonlinear to the intermediate section 4008. In the same way, all intermediate sections are repaired with the help of the two next sections coming from the series of completely manually repaired sections. Similar to what had Claude had implemented for Big Brain 1, for automatic repair, the transformed fully repaired section 4006 and 4011 in this example and section 4000. Eight were averaged. Areas in need of repair then turn out to be outliers that deviate significantly from the calculated mean. Identified areas in need of correction are then automatically repaired by replacing the tissue in section 4008 with those from the fully repaired nonlinear transformed section 4006 and 4011. However, for the shifted piece in sample C, this is oops, this here with this shifted piece. Uh, an additional manual repair was necessary. Of course, everything works only well if the section has been transformed very well. And of course, this has also controlled via the quality control tool, for instance. 
So where we are, to summarize the goal of this part of the project is the development of more automatic methods of the manual and automatic repair to speed up the process in terms of deployment of staff and time. We presented a couple of tools with speed up the process. In addition, the process themselves have also been simplified, making them more robust and practical. These newly developed tools are being applied at the moment at the Big Brand 2 data and will be further improved and optimized. In addition, the aim is always to develop and test tools that are also suitable for the next generation, for the third big brain, by processing also this one micron section. In particular, we are uh, working on methods to, to transferring the repairs that has been carried out in the 20 micron sections to the one micron sections. Finally, I would say for new brain, it is still difficult to estimate how much time is required to compute a 3D reconstruction at 20 micron. Realistically, however, we still have to say that it will take at least two or three years, and only if a single person deals with it completely and exclusively. If not, it may take much, much longer. So at the end, I would like to thank in particular our laboratory team, led by Markus Kramer, as well as our long-standing collaboration partners from the MNI. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>